Inter, economia partidei, Delgado, acolo este, va fi corner, dragi ascultători. Hello and welcome back to It Ain't Broke. I am Richard Jackson, a man that God turned into an angry bollock via the medium of male pattern baldness. And I'm joined <laughs> on my left by Mr. Brad Watson, director of Hallow's Eve and Other Stuff. Hello. Other Stuff. Other Stuff. Other Stuff. Soon to be revealed. Other stuff. I was looking at your MDB yeah. last night, actually. How are you? Yeah. 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 Not in a sex way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Brad and I had an aborted attempt on our old show to do Gremlins 2. There's some equipment issues and stuff, so we knocked it on the head because we've yes. wanted to do this for ages, yeah. right? Like, it's a big, big favourite of ours, and uh, we've both talked about it at various times, uh, but not, never, neither of us ever talked about it on the internet, no. at least not in a long form. So, uh, before we do any of that, here is a clip of it. Talk a little bit about what's going on in this room, because I think there are some fascinating ramifications here for the future. When you introduce genetic material of research quality to a life form such as ours, which is possessed of a, a sort of, a, I hesitate to use the word, atavism, but let us say a highly aggressive nature. For example, that fellow over near the, um, I believe that's a common bat of the order Choroptera, the only mammals, I might add, capable of complying. So, uh, yeah, we talked about this drunk and sober and all over the place. We've watched it on the internet for ages. Um, I talked about it, I think I touched on it in uh, the Robocop 2 video that Duncan and I did. Right. Uh, you know, because I genuinely, again, this and Robocop 2 are just two massive bits of postmodern Hollywood cinema are really clever. Yeah. Uh, I know you have bottomless enthusiasm for this film with mm -hmm. good reason. Tell me about Gremlins 2. Well, like I always say, any any movie that has a man dressed up as Robin Hood storming out of the archery channel, snapping his bow in disgust, is, is a winner as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. That's just an example of some of the random things that happen in this movie. Um, it's absolutely it, stuffed, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it, it is, it's jam-packed. It is pure... Uh, Joe Dante always wanted to make a Mad Magazine type movie and this is it, he, this was his moment to do it because because the studio so wanted a sequel to Gremlins and no one else could figure it out so they went back to Joe Dante and they said, and, and Mike Finnell his producer and they said please guys can you do it and they, and they said no and they said please if you do it you can do anything you want and Joe Dante obviously went <laughs> anything I want. Yes, you fools. Okay, and then, and the result is Gremlins 2. Uh, like I say, a, a marvelous mashup of postmodern nuttiness. Um, a, it's essentially a live-action Looney Tune as well, and uh, yeah. which, you know, the, the I think the, the, the wackiness of, of cartoons, other than something like Roger Rabbit, which uses obviously uses cartoons really, but the wackiness of cartoons has never been, I think, done live-action as well as this. You know, it just it just incorporates that anarchic spirit that a cartoon can have. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's just brilliant, it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. I remember going to see it, it came out the same, the same summer as Back to Future 3, and, and Back to Future 3 I was just gunning for, I was nuts for it, because I loved Back to Future 2, and I was like, ah, I can't wait to see it. And then I, and I went to a, a screening of Back to Future 3, couldn't get in, and I was like, and then because it was sold out, because back in those days, you know, you, you go to the cinema around and look you up. And, yeah. and, uh, and then I saw that Gremlins 2 was out, and I was like, oh, might as well go and, go and check that out. And then, yeah, and then, you know, 90 wacky minutes later, I was just like, I just fell in love with this movie. And it's one of those, and again, and it's one of those films that's, that a lot of people don't get as well. You know, you can show mm. this film to some people mm. and, they're, and they're like, what, what did I just watch? And you're like, yeah, it's, it's well, brilliant. It, it's, uh, yeah, we, so we talked about this before. It's something that, um, so I, I watched it on tape when it came out on tape. Um, and it was one of those ones. So there was like an off license down the road. You remember we used to rent videos and off licenses? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. might confuse kids. <laughs> kids, oh, yes. kids don't know what an off license yeah. is or a VHS. So that's like a double. Yeah. But um, yeah, we used to, that was a tape we used to go around and rent all the time, wore it out. And the home video one was slightly different, wasn't it? Because of well, the, the cinema. The, the, the full wall break that happens that, mm. that is fantastic. Yeah, because you had, obviously, in the, in, the, in the movie version, the version that you, that you, that you pretty much see anywhere now, um, yeah, the film actually breaks. It's a real, you know, uh, you know, you know, William Castle type sort of yeah. effect, and yeah. and it, it, uh, yeah, so it breaks, and, and the Gremlins start doing shadow puppets, and then they 
they jump into other movies and and uh, and then Hulk Hogan tells Hulk them to restart, to restart, restart the film. The film. Um, <laughs> I mean, just listen to that. that, that, that. It does just, sound like you. Yeah. Well, Kian, have you seen that Kian Peel sketch about yeah, Gremlins yeah. 2? That sums yes, it up because it brilliant. just sounds yeah. like someone's yeah, me- mental. No, exactly. Like, you know. It does just sound like madness. And um, but with the home video version, it it, it, it didn't work as well because they made it look like a, the videotape screwing up, and then yeah. and then they start doing the shadow puppets with static, and then and then they jump into a John Wayne, a really bad John Wayne impression movie. And it, it never it was never anywhere near as good as, as the good. original as the original version. But that that was that was the yeah the, the difference. But you know but you know kudos for them for trying to change it to work for the video. Take, yeah, yeah. Know, well, there's a great the kind of in. kind of transmedia thing there. Yeah, it? it's, it's divvied up those different formats, and I think in terms of being self-aware, that's a really neat move. I mean, it's yep. all for naught now because you just get the kind of theatrical yeah. version when you get it. Um, the point is, and the, and I said this before, that the, the connective tissue between this and Robocop 2 uh, is John Glover. Mm-hmm. And John Glover, oh my God, he I mean, brilliant I this. love him anyway, but yeah. he, this is he is, maximum. This is, uh, Daniel and, Clamp. And that the, the, the original you know, idea for, for for Daniel Clamp was him not to be like that, was for him to be the bad guy, for him yeah. to be, but John Glover literally put that spin on it. And, and I think, you know, Dante and, and Charlie Haas, the writer, they, they looked at each other and they were like, that's what we got to do. Well, he's not, he's so not a bad warm. guy. He's just a, he's just he's a big kid. Naive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a big kid. And, and it's all set up like he's this mysterious, you know, property developer tycoon that, that would work. And in know, any other film, he'd be the now. bad guy. Absolutely. You know. But it totally subverts that amazingly well. And and when you, so you, 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 you end up loving him. You end up loving this guy because he's just a big kid and he's yeah. just, just unaware of, and of, he's of the bad of side dumb. of his business. Yeah, he's very yeah, yeah, he's, he's kind very of unaware. Yeah. And he's annoying. unaware. And you almost think that you know, he's kind of he's not he's you know he, he, he immediately like at the end he does this whole speech where he's learned stuff and then suddenly immediately goes straight back <laughs> straight to his old back way. To he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. Bedford Falls. So good. <laughs> it, it's yeah. This is the thing. It, it's a whole treatise on why you shouldn't do a sequel. Yeah. And it's when you've made someone do a sequel that they don't want to do, yeah. and they make it about how you shouldn't do sequels. Yeah. So it's got all these great moments about like, uh, you know, they have the whole scene where they pick apart the rules of Gremlins because they don't make any sense. Yeah. There's the Leonard Maltin scene as well. Yeah. And then when they get access to the lab. There's all the stupid, ridiculous gremlin ideas like the fruit and vegetable yep. one and yep. the, the girl one and the electricity one. Yep. Also, by the way, when I watched Amazing Spider-Man 2, which was with Duncan, uh, <laughs> I really felt Electro was the electric gremlin and he yeah. even goes inside the plug <laughs> socket. The road, it's like Dr. Yes. Manhattan meets yeah. the electric gremlin because he yeah. like faxes himself yeah. or whatever. I was like, like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I've seen this before. <laughs> it's weirdly yeah. reminiscent it, or something. It was, it was really, but that was genius. And I remember, the thing is also, it, it's so anarchic and it's so crazy, and the whole point of, of the film is just to, just to basically throw custard pies at everyone, yeah. in, in the studio included and the audience included. You know, just to just a gag on everyone. It's basically big. It's a massive troll, really. It's it like, really is. And, it, and it, all that. But it also works brilliantly structurally, just as a movie as well. Like the moment where where they're gonna where they're gonna um, fry all the gremlins. They're gonna drop the thing and fry it, and then then obviously the rain clouds come. And it's gonna rain, and suddenly you know suddenly that last that last act um, raising of the jeopardy really works. And then when he when he's he's get you know he tells um, Dick Miller to the great Dick Miller to uh, spray them all with water, which obviously everyone's thinking, what are you doing? As mm. an audience member, I was like. What's he doing? And then he goes to the phone and the electric gremlin comes up. I was just like, genius. Genius. It, it's, it's a really amazing it is, reveal at the end. It of is what actually a work was. of genius. Yeah, I really brilliant. think that because it's it's just this brilliant, subversive, mad thing that kind of slipped under the radar. And I, the, there's always been this thing is like, oh, Gremlins 2 shit. They went too far at shit. It's just this big, stupid cartoon. It's yeah. like, no, no. Mm-hmm. Gremlins 2 is better than Gremlins 1. And I don't <laughs> care what anybody says. Like, you've got fucking Chris Lee carrying a pod from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's you've got Dunn and Dan yeah. Stanton. All yeah. of the lab stuff yeah. is fucking amazing. Yeah. You've got... Um, I've always loved the recurrence of Dick Miller and Robert Picardo yeah. and all Dante yeah. stuff. Yeah, and it's always kind of wonderful to see him. And it's, but in this, they both have major parts yeah they've got big roles in yeah. this, which is great yeah. to see yeah i i would you know what's better gremlins or gremlins or gremlins 2 is for me is more of a tricky debate because they both they're both totally different movies and they both appeal to very different you know halves of me you know i i have eclectic taste i like i like the 
I love I love the uh, you know Gremlins for as a movie as the, as the Spielberg dark Spielbergian yeah the uh, uh, Christmas movie that it is mm. and and for me it's wonderful it's one of the most brilliantly made you know such a great you know but it's one, back in the days where movies were paced brilliantly and and it's like it's one of those whereas Gremlins two just appeals to the other half of me that just likes just loves to see you know anarchic shit happen and random stuff happen and just and then and and wait for a moment for that randomness to sink in and you go because you first of all you're like what, what happened there what the fuck just yeah, happens yeah, yeah. yeah and then and then you think about it you go and then you start laughing again and then you and then you you're watching the movie and you start laughing at something that happened half an hour ago in the movie because it suddenly comes back in your head things like that and uh, that's um special that's, that's special yeah. yeah and then so so for me the the two movies of you know they I'm not saying one is better than the other yeah I'm not mad yeah. that's absolutely <laughs> mad and I'll get so much shit for it I just think well, no, I am saying one's better than yeah. the other. That's no, exactly yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm very sorry. You're allowed to do that, yeah. Well, what I, yeah, what I meant to say was I'm not saying Gremlins 1 is bad. No. At all. No, no. Like, that's no, not well, what I'm saying. I wouldn't, I wouldn't two, be here if you thought that. Well, I mean, quite yeah, so, we, yeah. yeah. They're two very different <laughs> beasts, yeah. I think. But, um, yeah, Gremlin, Gremlins 1 is kind of, it goes to the dark place and it's kind of a good horror yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. But then, this is the problem. This is the problem. It's because Gremlins 2 pisses on it so much. Yeah. Like, I can't oh, yeah, help yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when the, 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 what is it, the Memorial Day or... Because <laughs> she reprises that really horrible story <laughs> from... Yes. But then it's like, but it's way worse. It's really oh my horrible. God. Like, it's, it's just like... And that's a gag you really wouldn't do like, in a, in a, Jesus in a summer Hollywood movie So it's movie like now. Phoebe Cates getting diddled by Abe Lincoln is basically the joke. Oh, my God. It's Abe Lincoln, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It's just like... Yes. What and the it, fuck? Yeah. It's like, hey, little girl. <laughs> she just pulls Dude, out. Dude, that's it's really it's, fucking it's, it's, horrible. Yeah, but but that's again, it's a, it, it's a massive in joke as yeah. well. Like because because that that story, Phoebe Cates' story in Gremlins, was such a bugbear for Joe Dante to keep it in. It was such a massive thing uh, that yeah that he does a whole joke about it. About <laughs> just having yeah now she's got another memory <laughs> to, <laughs> and she goes and and everyone's just like. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they're all like, you know, the whole reaction to that is like, oh, here funny, she goes again you know, with another one of yeah, her stories. Yeah, they're like, oh, here she goes again, yeah. <laughs> that is black as night, that. It's, it's just so dark. Yeah. It's just like, oh, fuck. But, it, but, it's, but also, I have to say that, um, uh, again, going back to, you know, traditions of filmmaking, it does have, it has one of the most amazing uh, um, la last minute um uh, uh, um, what would you call it when, when when someone when someone comes in at the last minute? Day say, day, yeah, yeah, has you know basically one of the best reveals of a character or, or is Gizmo. You know, is the 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 vent flying off and, and he's standing there dressed as Rambo. This whole Rambo thing where he's got the paper clip yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and the and the mute and Jerry Gold's Jerry Gold's score is superb for this movie. Yeah. I think it's one of the yeah, best yeah, scores yeah, ever written. Yeah. It's so good. Spot and the way on. he's he does his own because he did Rambo, he did all that, and he does his own parody of himself. Uh, with with Gizmo dressed as Rambo, and that that reveal it brings very goose people just thinking about it. It's so stupid, but it's such an effective That's moment. That's why this is a genius film because yeah. it just touches on that stuff so well, yeah. and it does it real, with real emotion, even though it's turning everything inside out on yeah. purpose. Yeah. It's just this insanely subversive thing. But even as a kid, it was just fun and funny. Yeah. And as an adult, I get to be a pretentious wank about it on the internet. <laughs> but like, as a kid, and because, you know, Joe Dante um, getting his hands on the Looney Tunes kind of properties, being a Warner Brothers joint, you know, yeah. like that's yeah. all good. Yeah. Um, though I, I've never, have you ever watched Looney Tunes back in action? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I figured yeah. you would have done. Yeah. I've never actually yeah. watched it. It's, it. But it's 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 well known as a, as a, as a movie that was butchered in, you know, oh, it was. Think, it was yeah, interviewed yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I stuff. think it's. I think it's the movie that. I mean, I, I, I've not heard him say this, but you, you can sense that it's Joe you know, Dante kind of fell out of love a bit with Hollywood after that movie. Mm. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I'm not speaking for the man. I don't know him, but um, but uh, but you can kind of sense that. And um, yeah, although there is moments of genius in it. There's, a, there's an amazing sequence of them all of them all running running through um, an art gallery, but not not through the gallery, through the paintings. Of the art gallery, so it's all different right. style, you know, right. painting styles in the animation. It's really, really that brilliant. Is, so well, I suppose really, could, if you do that, you're. I don't want to go too far down this rabbit no. hole, but you're you're kind of doing a duck amuck yeah. thing yeah, yeah. as if you do that because yeah. it's. But that's the. I mean, again, you know, if I was going to compare, any, I would say specifically duck amuck and Gremlins Two. Yeah. 
or two things because it yeah, just yeah. plays with the format. And then it even has whole, whole sections of it are about the creation of media and about television. Yeah. So, you know, all the TV, like you said, all the TV studio stuff and, and whatnot, like is, is, is there and all the different channels and a lot. Of, and it's and, and a good example of a thing where a lot of it, I think, is kind of lost on the audience now because. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it's, it's incredibly prescient as well. I mean, it, it predicted that kind of thing that, that, that we're just going to have all these crazy channels. I mean, well, that's that, I mean, it, isn't it? I mean, we, we've kind of come, we're kind of coming out of that now, like, like we've now, you know, now the way home media streaming is going but back but there's there's this big clump where yeah where you went with your sky subscription for us in the uk or whatever or whatever you had you had all these random channels well, that, was, that, that was a rich vein of satire things. wasn't it yeah it was a rich vein of satire yeah. that, um the, the more channels you have the lower quality they mm. become and, and actually if you look at tv like digital tv like i've got a digital tv package because it costs the same as just having broadband. Yeah. But fuck me wading through it, it's tedious because yeah. everything's become ghettoized. Yeah. And Gremlins 2 knew that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Before it happened. Totally and then we had cool. KYT. Do you ever watch KYTV? Yeah. TV with yes. The, yeah. yeah. So yeah, like yeah, KYTV yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, they, they predicted that as well because it yeah. was this kind of, ri again, rich vein of satire. Yeah. And this film does cross genres because yeah. it does horror, but it does action and it they do like a hammer thing. I mean, they've literally put Christopher Lee in it. Yep. And that's doubled down in a reference to uh, um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers and the yep. kind of B movie side. And Got, and, you, and there's a sign saying Dr. Quake Mass. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, know, what the there's, fuck? There's, like, there's this is a 1990 so Hollywood movie, yeah. like, referencing Nigel yeah. Neal. Like, no, no. Are you yeah. pulling it's, my leg? It's like, it's, it's crazy. But, it, but for me, like, for me, especially, like, at that, at the age I was at the time, going to see the, see the movie in the cinema, it, it was kind of, for me, it was a dawning of my own, of being okay with my own tastes and things as well. You know, you go through that when you're a kid, you, you just go with whatever, and but then you start to realise, no, no, I. I like this, and, and and the thing, the, the the gag that I give credit to me finally laughing at something that no one else was laughing at, but I was fine with that, is uh is is when I was sitting in the cinema and it's the it's the uh, the voice over in the men's room, and when uh, when the guy when he when Billy walks in and goes, Mister, welcome to the men's room, and then the and then the other guy walks out and goes, Hey buddy, I sure hope you wash those hands. I just lost my shit. I think it's the funny. No one else I know laughs at that. I think it's one of the it's funniest so, things ever. And out in the lobby, <laughs> it's stuffed for those nuts voiceovers <laughs> and warnings and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. All, all this kind of like yeah. really borderline dyst because it's kind of got a vein of dystopia in it yeah. as well. It's oh, yeah, like this, yeah, yeah. Dystop this kind of over policed computerized building, mm. which again, at the time was played for last, but if you watch it now, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. I've been to that. Yeah, it looks that like happens now. Yeah, well, exactly. I, I, when I turn up for a job in London and you go inside some big building in the city, and it's like this is fucking yeah, clamped tower. Clamped tower. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's it's that's actually quite difficult for people to realise. Like, is is how is how far out it, it was with that stuff, and actually now that stuff just seems doesn't seem that far out because just, we're living in that world practically. It's so much of it, it, it's so many layers to it, but it, I love it because it's sort of like, it, it, it pretends like it's stupid yeah. and it goes out of his way that, to tell you that you're stupid for what, you're A, stupid for watching it and B, stupid for liking it. <laughs> but it does it in a really clever way yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, you're right, I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm fine with that, Joe Dante. Yeah, Thank you very absolutely, much. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm going to watch it again now. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I think one Christmas because it's there. A, a small section. I saw it about seven times in the cinema. Like, did I, you really? Yeah. Like I love it so much. I kept taking people to see it. I was like, please, you've got to come. You've got to see. We it. watched it twice in a night here, not back yeah, to back. Right. Because yeah. there's I've got all my DVDs over here, but down with the telly, there's like a small selection that get kind of pulled out. And Gremlins Two has not left the, the alcove next to DVD player since it was bought. Because it's always like, well, I don't want to have to walk across the room yeah, to get yeah, that. Yeah, one. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's keep that on standby. Yeah. It's in a two pack with a kind of neglected. Gremlins 1. <laughs> nothing wrong with Gremlins 1, Gremlins 1's great, but Gremlins 2 shits on it. Like, from a great height with a plum. Sarcastic, it's a sarcastic yeah. poo. Oh, absolutely, yeah, it does. Uh, uh, but there's just, again, there's so many, I think one of the things that, the, the people that don't quite get the, sub, the subversive humour that we obviously that connect to it straight away, a lot of people still enjoy it because of all the gags, because there, there is just like, basically, you know, al almost, you know, Zucker Zucker Abraham style gags going on all the time. and. Especially with the announcements and things like that, you know the, the uh, uh, you know on the cable on the cable channel tonight, you know, um, uh, Casablanca <laughs> now in colour <laughs> with, with a happier with ending. A happier ending. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel Clamp's end of the world video. Yeah. <laughs> it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> He's standing there. It's like, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> 
I want to put John Glover in all things. Yes. He's, he's even. I'd, I'd even watch the scenes of his from Batman and Robin just because yeah. he's in them. Absolutely, you know I mean? yeah. Like, and, and he and he's one of the best uh, uh, doing his own puppetry of a gremlin when he's being attacked. <laughs> That's fantastic bit of so shit. Good. Yeah. It's amazing. Fantastic. And when, he, when his tie goes in yeah. the shredder <laughs> and stuff. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate using these things myself. <laughs> 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 But there's a there's a classic gag in it where, where when he's when he's coming in to because the way the way that Gremlin takes out his secretary is <laughs> he's eating a sandwich and, and the Gremlin hand comes up takes the top of the sandwich and puts a mousetrap in it and, like that, and then and then it cuts to clump but you just hear this <laughs> and you're like oh my god. What the so I, t I totally, that's the thing, I totally get why people hate it. Yeah. Because it's like, it's such a tonal shift. Yeah, totally, yeah. Having recently just talked about the Predator, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like a yeah, tonal yeah, shift. Because yeah. if you were really involved in the horror elements of the first one, yeah. if you really bought into that mythology, yeah, 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 again, yeah. this film tells you you're stupid <laughs> for liking it. It's like, <laughs> like this is a stupid gremlin, how could you, how could you buy into it? It's stupid yeah. and you're yeah, stupid yeah, for yeah, liking yeah. it and watching it. And guess what, that applies to the first one as yeah, well. And yeah. it's the director telling you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a definite, it's, it's really... a gear change. You can tell that, um, you can tell that there is no Chris Columbus. Yeah. You know, story work, script wise, mm. and stuff. This is a, a full Joe Dante joint. And, yeah. and to play the other side for a bit, because otherwise it's just like our circle jerk and Gremlins 2, which I ain't got no problem with, son. Um, point, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's just a loving. You know, it's a very different thing. And, oh, and, yeah. And it's because uh, Gremlins 1 has that kind of Spielberg y Amblin yep. kind of vibe yep. and, and, and the Chris Columbus thing and the kind of family element. And it's yep. a bit more kind of cutesy and chocolate yep. boxy. And well, they wanted that. That was, yeah, the. Um, those, I, think, I think Gremlins was the very first official Amblin movie that went into production. Oh, is that right? Okay. I, I, I might be wrong, but I believe so. Um, and so, so, obviously, Warner Brothers wanted Spielberg. They wanted Spielbergian films from Ambien. That's where they wanted the Spielberg Well, that, that so, whole brand so all was, even Gremlins, from the yeah. fucking Elliot and E.T. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so, they, so, so Gremlins is filled with that. It's got that. And it, but, I, but I still say it's more Dante than Spielberg. Because Dan, I just say Dante's naturally got Spielbergian uh, uh, talent in him anyway. And he, so he, he, he kind of comes across. But like you say, with Gremlins 2, then there's none of that. None of that at all, mm. and it is mm. totally a tonal shift. So you can understand why people were like, "Yeah." But for me, at the age I was, that's what I liked. That's why I loved it because it was totally different. And um, and and what a risk, which didn't really pay off. It didn't do very well. But um, but I, I remember seeing um, uh, Jerry Goldsmith in concert um, back in the '90s, and 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 he did um, uh, he did a, a, a he did the, the Gremlin Suite, <clears throat> and he and he before he said he said, he said well he said I had a tiny role in Gremlins, you know, you, you can see me in the background, you know, but I, but I had no speaking lines, I'm on the phone. Uh, and, and he said, he said, but uh, I mean, Gremlins did really well, it did amazingly well, um, but it didn't do that well in Europe. He said, said it did much better in America than in Europe. And then he said, uh, but, so in, but in Gremlins 2, uh, uh, Joe gave me a speaking role. So yeah, because Jerry Goltz is the guy, you know, what's going on here? She said there were rats. Yeah, oh, that's, that's Jerry right. Goltz, that's yeah. his wife. And, uh, and, he, uh, and he said, so they gave me a speaking role. And he said, "In America, America, the film flopped." He said, "But it did really well in Europe." He said, "So that just proves to me what, what great taste you have in Europe." You know, and it was it was great. You know, so, so you know, he had Goldsmith and, and uh, Dante just you know clicked so well, and it and shows. Totally I mean, got real what he was synergy. Doing. Yeah, like totally got what he was doing. Um, but uh, it's yeah, it's, it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. It is. It really is. I mean, it's hard to know what else more to say other than it is. It's just this really wonderful, lovely, funny, heartfelt, and and it's a massive troll. It's you yeah. know, I've never felt so privileged to have someone call me an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then have me agree with them afterwards. Yeah. yeah. You know, Absolutely. It's, uh, it's just not. I mean, well, you, you you know, you know my feelings of Joe Dante, and there's just. You know, there's there's not enough Joe Dante movies in the world, especially what, that, what he was doing in that, in that period, and this is this is kind of his big, you know, kind of. I mean, because after this it was Matinee, which which um, you know, which which is a wonderful film, and probably his ultimate love letter to everything he loves, you know, all that stuff. But it was almost like Gremlins Two was was him just him, him just going going right, you know, I don't <laughs> yeah, care anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm it's like a this. clear out, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Get this out was of it? Oh, no, no, well, was Matinee before? Well, I might be getting confused. I wouldn't ever challenge you on that, yeah. Brad. Like, ooh, ooh, my, my Dante law has gone out of my head. Because um, Charlie Haas wrote 
uh, Matinee. Oh no, yeah, no, he knew they were working on Matinee before Gremlins 2, but then I, but Matinee didn't happen to us, I think. I might be wrong. So right. Someone might, might have a gun. Right. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but it's because it's the same writer, Charlie Hass, wrote Matinee and wrote, wrote Gremlins 2. Um, uh, whether what, what, was, what that script looked like, well, who knows? Gonna, I, they're very, they're, well, that's interesting because they're very kind of, they're both, well, I know it's a Dante thing, but they're very kind of cine aware. Yeah. But they are both, in effect, films about films. Yeah. You know, Gremlins 2 is about Gremlins 1, which is yeah. really funny. It's a yeah. reflect, Gremlins 2 is about Gremlins 1, and it's about genre, and it's a genre hopping, genre bending yeah. kind of broad strokes well, parody. It's, you had this, you had this period where you had Gremlins 2 that was, that was totally a comment on Gremlins 1. And then, and then just, just you know, the, the year, well, just the six months previous to that, you had Back to the Future two, that was a sequel that went back into the original yeah, movie, yeah, literally and showed it from a different point of view. There's this, this period where, you, again, it, it, this was a golden age, I, I think, where the big studios were letting filmmakers, I mean, sometimes, you know, for better or for worse, yeah, yeah, say. sometimes for better for worse, and sometimes a little, little bit uh, hesitantly, but there were, there was still the, the filmmakers were still able to just try and do some stuff and play with, with with the way these things are supposed to happen and um and 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 i think that we were all the richer for it for, for the, those sort of movies in that period so good it's so good amazing <laughs> um well i think that's it really i got no more left to say no about Gremlins. so i probably have but i'm just a bit tired and hot <laughs> but, um, no, that was excellent. That was good uh, stuff. I'm, uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting a call saying that my uh, to remove my car because it's old and dirty. Take care of that. Keep parked outside the Valverde <laughs> Communications Ministry. That's that'll happen, mate. <laughs> Even if you are mates with the dictators. Uh, all right, good stuff. Brad will be back to do more stuff. We should do the Burbs or something one time. I fucking love the Burbs. Yeah. I fucking love the Burbs. They do it to me. It's brilliant. Um, I, hello, I'm Welsh. Uh, very good. Excellent. Instagram, Twitter, uh, Twitch, uh, I don't know, Snapchat. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. As our sovereign nation is being invaded by gremlins, the Valverde Broadcasting Company now must leave the air. We hope you enjoyed our programming, but more importantly, we hope you have enjoyed life. <laughs> Support your 7th or 8th favourite YouTube channel by buying crap, tat, junk, hogwash and filth at redbubble.com slash people slash Valverde shop.